Hey, this is Sasha Evdikov, and welcome to investinghelpdesk.com, where I answer some of your frequently asked investing and stock trading questions. Now, today's question is, what's your take on bottom fishing companies with recent IPOs? So first off, what is bottom fishing? Bottom fishing is when you are aiming to buy the stock at its lowest price, oftentimes due to the stock having a large sell-off. Now, if you want to learn more about bottom fishing, take a look at this video right here that was published in September 22nd, 2015, and you can find that link at uh, the following URL or just click the button over here and it'll take you to that video. Now, the short summary behind this question is typically I do not care to bottom fish. Most stocks that are cheap are cheap for a reason. Now, people are attracted to them because of the potential, but potential doesn't mean high probability. Some of those stocks will never get back up to those higher prices or higher levels when they had their IPO. So let's take a look at some charts and apply this concept and see how it relates on some popular companies. Welcome to the screen and here I want to share with you some charts of some recent IPOs and what's going on with these IPOs over the last couple of years, year or since they've been released. And uh, the first one on screen here you can see was Etsy. Now Etsy was released right around this time, um, April, mid-April of 2015. And you can see as it was released here on the IPO right around the $30 range, that stock has been going down ever since and now it's below the $10 range. Does that mean it's going to stay below $10? No, it doesn't. But you can see the trend that overall from that high since its IPO, that stock continues selling. Now, why does this happen? Well, you have to remember there's early investors that got into the stock, you know, a year or two years ago. And now when they're ready to sell, they go ahead and sell that company. Now, sometimes they do have a lockout, meaning they have to hold the stock publicly for six months, a year, three months, whatever the time frame is, and then you'll see some selling come in. But uh, in this case, you don't, you really don't know. Other people, they may be able to sell it at any time. But in general, take a look at the stock chart. I mean, from that IPO around the $30 range, you know, this stock, once it's open, after about a year here, it's still below $10. It's been continuing to move lower. If you look at Twitter right here, you can see that Twitter, if we take a look at it here on the weekly, Twitter was a 2013 year IPO. So we opened up right around $42. That stock had some initial success and then we moved lower, little pop, hit these little resistance levels right around the IPO price and then continues to roll over and since then has been continuing to move lower. That's $14 now, whereas the IPO was right around $45. If you take a look at Alibaba, same thing, right around the 2014 time frame. Here was Alibaba. This is the weekly chart. You can see that overall this weekly uh, chart has been heading lower. We had the IPO right around $94. Stock hits about $120 with the initial um, initial euphoria and happiness level of people. And then the stock continued to sell off. And now we're getting a little bounce here as support at around the $60 range. And that stock is trying to pop around the $80 range, but it's still below that IPO price range. If you take a look at the daily, you can see here's the daily chart of Alibaba, and you can see the movements there. If you take a look at Groupon, GRPN, another uh, IPO right around here, we were launched in 2011. Stock was at $27 a share, sold off heavily down to $2.70, popped higher to 12 and then continues and now is under five bucks. So really it's been under the $13 range for a couple of years now since about uh, 2013 or so. And you can see that since its IPO, it's been doing nothing but heading lower and lower. So uh, this one obviously didn't work out. Fitbit, which was just a recent IPO, you can see it's a weekly chart here. If we take a look at the daily, it was just released in 2015, right around June time. Um, and right here, stock popped a little bit to the $50 range. We opened at around 30, got to about 50 at these highs. And then since then, that stock has been selling off, heading lower. We're getting a little bit of action here the last couple months, but then overall, probably I'm going to, we'll see it sell off just like the other ones. 
Now, one, uh, one more right here. If you take a look at Groupon, here's the weekly chart. The Groupon IPO is around $34. We had some really nice run-ups here to about the 90 almost $100 level. Stock sold off, had an A to B, B to C, C to D pattern, and now that stock still is hanging out under that $15 range. And finally, the last one is Facebook. Now, Facebook, if you take a look at the monthly chart, actually is one that's been doing fairly well. So in this case, the IPO was right around $41. The IPO initially sold off here for a few months. This was in 2012. And then after a consolidation for about a year or two, now we've had some nice run up about 67 points to the upside in this stock. Is it due for a pullback? Yeah, a nice little pullback would be healthy for the stock. Uh, but overall, in this case, this IPO worked out. But as you can see, most of them did not work out. And that's typically how many IPOs uh, trade. It's, it's because of that stability factor, because they're new, they're fresh. You don't know if they're going to get some initial um, high runs, just like here with the uh, GoPro. You get an initial pop and then you get some selling coming in. Um, you know, but other times, if you have a nice company, you might get a little consolidation sideways and then really uh, power higher. Uh, but all the other ones, like a Fitbit here, you can see they have an IPO and then continue lower. And then uh, GoPro, we talked about Etsy. You know, you can see this one opened up high and just continues to roll over. Uh, Alibaba here is kind of still moving to the downside or sideways. And, um, you know, Twitter, even Twitter, you can see that here opened a little euphoria and then continues to sell off further. So that's really what what IPOs look like. And, um, you know, for them, I usually don't buy into them. I'd rather trade the more stable companies rather than where people are just buying or selling due to emotional reasons. Now, if you'd like to see more questions and answers such as this video, then be sure to visit me at investinghelpdesk.com. And don't forget to get on the newsletter list so that way you don't miss any episodes, discounts, promotions, courses, and other training material when it's released. And of course, you can subscribe to us on YouTube or see the recent courses, books, and training material by just clicking one of these buttons and boxes right here on your screen and it'll take you to the corresponding page. Thanks again, and remember to do what you love, contribute to others, but most importantly, live life abundantly.